Hey guys, this is Brent with Western Equipment, and today I'm going to be giving you a product overview of the John Deere 4052R subcompact utility tractor. I'm going to be giving you a quick rundown of some of the features on the outside of this tractor as well as in the cab. So if you guys will stick with me here, we'll get started. We're starting here with the John Deere 4052R. Uh, this is John Deere's uh, 52 horse power tractor in the 4000 series. This is an R model, so the one thing we'll be really pointing out is this is a cab model. You can only get the cab in this 4000 series if you're in the R trim level. Um, also, one of the things we have here is the 440R loader installed. This is also a factory installed option. Uh, so we'll start at the front of this and kind of work our way to the back of the tractor. First thing we'll talk about here is the bucket that's installed on this 440R. You can get the uh, loader with or without the bucket. Uh, generally, we'd get it with the bucket, but as you can see, I mean, this is a solid, sturdy bucket with a cutting edge uh, here. You also have the bolt holes on the front where you can add the additional cutting edge if you'd like, just to save the wear on your bucket here. Uh, we work our way up right here. We do have the chain hooks. Uh, these are very useful to a lot, of, a lot of customers. These tractors are used a lot of times for moving things. And this, maybe not necessarily dirt all the time, but moving different things, picking things up. So with these chain loops, these are great. You can wrap your chain around uh, and make this loader even more versatile. Also, this is a quick change bucket. So you can see here with these pins, you have one here, um, and then you have a pin on the other side, and you also have these loops on this bucket uh, with these arms that act as hooks here. Um, this loader can be used for many different applications, not just a bucket. You could put things like a pallet fork on it, a uh, bale spear, uh, a variation of different options as long as they have this hookup, which is the John Deere uh, 400 series hookup. Uh, so very versatile loader. Another reason why we put this loader on the tractor is because this being a compact tractor, you want it to be versatile. Uh, most, of the most of the time customers are looking for a compact tractor to do their various uh, things they need to do around their place. So uh, as we move up here, we can see the very solid, uh, very rigid configuration. This is a huge, and, and a lot of people don't, don't think about this when they're looking, but the more, the more steel you have here and the more bracing you have, the stronger this loader is. And as you can see, it's thick all the way back. We come back here to the loader frame arms and these are solid cast as well as the parking frame here. Everything about this loader uh, is heavy, it's solid, you can tell you can really do work with it. Um, so while we're back here towards the, towards the uh, loader arms here and the frames, I wanna point out that this is also a quick parking loader. Um, so we pointed this out in another video over the 120R loader, uh, but this is this, about the same setup here. You have a latch here and a latch on the other side. If you were to lower the loader, get the pressure off of the cylinders, get out of the tractor, release these latches, get back in the tractor, and raise this loader as if you are raising it, it would extend these cylinders and pop this loader up off of the pins here. As you're doing that, this parking frame, as we go along here and you can see the feet here, it'll be going towards the ground and essentially self-park. Um, which is a great feature on this loader, real easy to take off for your applications like mowing or getting into tight, tight places where you don't need the extra weight or you don't need the extra bulk out in front to make those turns. Uh, once you pop this loader off, you can go underneath here, real easy to get to. Here are your hydraulic couplers where you would undo those, hang them on the loader, you'd be completely disconnected. But I just wanna point out how, how easy it is to get here to these. Some of the competitive models um, they try to hide these couplers back behind the frame to protect them. In this case, these are, these are down, they're out of the way, but they're also easy to get to. So I just wanna point that out. Um, also one thing about the loader that's great is it's very easily serviceable. You have your grease points here directly at the joints on each one, they're easy to get to on the outside. All the way down the loader, you have them all over. You can see they're easy to grease. This machine's been greased. You can see it coming out there all the way down. Sometimes on the competition, these are on the back side. Another thing there, they're trying to protect them, uh, but they're also make them harder to get to. Ours are recessed in enough that they should be protected, but also easily, easily accessible for that maintenance. So we'll work our way back here um, on the tractor. 
Uh, one thing I like to point out a lot of times is where the battery is located. So we're right here on the side, easy to get to. You have a couple of uh, a couple of knobs here. These are just screw in knobs. You pull this up and off. And as you can see right there, that is all it takes right there to get to your battery. And you just place this back on for time's sake. I'll just set it down here. Uh, as we move up here, you can see also we have a right-hand door. Of course, we don't have steps on this side, and this is also where our pedals are. So we wouldn't generally enter from this side, but what this is is a safety point for if you need to quickly get out of the tractor, say you're pinned on that side or you're turned over on that side, you do have this right-hand door uh, to make it easy to get out. So we'll move back here further on back down the tractor. Um, one thing I like to point out is the tires. On this tractor, you do have tire options. This is the R4 tire. It's an industrial tire, so this is kind of a multi-use tire. Uh, it does have, you can see, the large tread for if you were out in the field, if you're in the dirt, in the grass, uh, whatever you may be in, you are gonna get good traction with these, but they're also not too, not too tall that they're gonna tear up your place. Uh, your other options would be a turf tire, which would have the small knobs, uh, be very good on your grass or your, your finished, uh, finished turf. And then also you would have an R1, which is more of an ag style tire, which would look similar to this, but would be higher and more pointy for better traction if you're gonna be, say, in your arenas or in your, uh, your mud or whatever you may be in. But this is uh, the, kind of the general use R4 tire. As we look up here, you do have your easy, uh, your easy fill for your windshield washer fluid. Like I said, this is a cab model, so you do have the windshield wiper uh, and the reservoir for the fluid. Now you do have your SMV symbol. We put these on all of our subcompact tractors. Make sure people know when you're, when you're moving it down the road that you are a slow moving vehicle. Uh, below that is gonna be our lift arms. This is uh, a feature on this tractor that's specific to the R model. This is for hitch assist, uh, which we'll go over in another, in another video. Basically having to do with the three point, which you can see we do have on this tractor. Um, so that knob will raise and lower this three point with the hitch assist feature. Uh, as you go down, this does have your standard 540 PTO on it. As you can see, already greased and ready to go for you there, as well as a multi uh, position drawbar here. So you do have the, you know, the multiple, the multiple uh, positions here on the drawbar. You also have easy, easy moving sway links. Uh, with this, whenever you have rear implements on, you don't want these arms to be swaying back and forth with that implement running into your tire. So you do have these to adjust to what width of implement you're going to be with and also where they need to be where they're not swaying um, into the tire. As well as, of course, your standard adjustable top link to get out there to whatever size implement you've got as well. As we move around here, a couple of the last things I'll point out is our big easy to fill fuel cap. They do place it at the rear of the tractor, that way avoiding some of that mess. If you do uh, create a mess, you're here at the back, easy to clean up. You don't have that possibility of it getting into your cab or the fumes or uh, the mess getting in there. Um, and then right next to it, this is our hitch control panel or our hitch assist panel, which I'll be going over in a bit. But this is a feature on this R tractor where when you're at the rear, you can be out of the seat and actually move this tractor fore or aft to get you closer to those rear implements to hook up. Uh, overall, guys, that's, that's kind of the rundown of the outside. So now we'll uh, move into the cab here. So now we're here in the cab of this tractor. And as I said before, this is an R series tractor, which is a premium trim level. So I wanna go over all of the features and all of the controls in this cab because there are a bunch being in that R trim level. So we'll start here with the left-hand side and then we'll move to the right-hand side. So starting back here uh, to my left, you do have the 12 volt outlet. Uh, great accessory here for that phone charger, tablet charger, whatever you may have. Uh, you have that option right here next to your console, you know, to set those items in. Also, you have this cup holder here for whatever, that coffee for those early mornings or water, or whatever you may be drinking at the time. Uh, and then down below that, we do have our range selector. So I'll point out here that this is a three range. You have A, B, and C range, and then your neutral. Uh, a would be your low and slow working gear. B would be your overall working gear that you'd be in most of the time. And then C is going to be your road gear uh, for your high speeds for moving that tractor from place to place. And then you have your neutral for when you're parked. Um, and I do want to point out that this is a three range transmission, but down here, my foot, these are the brakes. You do not have the clutch over here on the side because this is a hydrostatic transmission that runs off of the John Deere twin touch pedals. You have a forward here 
in reverse here very similar to uh, you know to driving your car for the inexperienced operator this is a great a great feature or for any operator really great ease of use feature uh, less fatigue, less pushing on a clutch on the, your left hand side and, and shifting gears. Uh, getting a gear, forward and reverse, you're ready to go. Uh, so moving on from that, we'll go down. It does have the automotive style parking brake that you'd release just like that, pull up to engage it. Uh, most people are very used to that. Um, right next to that, I want to point out that this is a very homey style feeling tractor. It has the acoustical upholstery here to cut down some of that noise. Um, and that's also just a premium trim level feature uh, along with as it matches the seat too. So you have that along with a headliner that we'll point out in a minute. As we move our way down, you can see here, this, uh, this lever here is for the differential lock. That differential lock is going to be for those sticky or muddy situations, um, kind of just like your vehicle also. Only one wheel is really turning most of the time to give the tractor its power. But when you lock in those differentials, it gets those wheels turning at the same time uh, to give you that full power to get out of that sticky situation. So that will be important uh, for some operators that deal in the dirt or in the mud. Uh, as we move our way forward, we'll talk about these brakes a little more. They are dual-sided brakes, so you do have left and right side. These will control the back wheels individually. Um, why would you need to do that? Well, if you needed to turn one direction or the other, if you brake, if you brake on the left-hand side, it will turn you to the right harder. Same thing, vice versa. If you brake on the right-hand side, it'll turn you to the left harder. So getting in those tight corners, those tight situations, this could be a very good tool. Um, generally, we leave them locked, so it acts as a normal brake that would just stop you when you, when you push on that. Uh, while we're down here, I'll point out the visibility of this tractor. As you can see, you can see all the way to your front wheel there, all the way out on each side. It matches on the other side. But the other thing I'd point out is one thing you don't see on the front of this tractor is that big exhaust stack. That small silver circle in the middle is your exhaust. You don't have the pipe sticking up in your view all day that you're having to look around. It has been uh, done away with and you have your exhaust there on the hood. Also, I'd point out you do have this windshield wiper. so. You know, for your safety and for your visibility, you're going to be in this tractor when it's raining, snowing, whatever it may be, you do have that wiper for your convenience sake. So to control that, I'll go here by the steering wheel. You do have your windshield wiper control here. You also have right next to it your four-wheel drive control. As I mentioned, this is a four-wheel drive tractor that you can engage or disengage. Times you need this engaged, say when you're doing loader work. Or like I said before, when you're in those muddy, sticky situations, you may need to be in that four-wheel drive. But you don't want to use it all the time. Um, it'd definitely be a situational thing. The less you're in that four-wheel drive, the less wear and tear on those gears and the longer life of your tractor. Um, the other thing that I'd point out here on this left-hand side, this is your hitch assist selector. This turns it on or off. That hitch assist is where you can move the tractor without being in the seat at the rear to help when you're hooking up those implements to your rear hitch. But like I said, we'll go over that in another video. Uh, so from here, guys, we'll move over to the right-hand side of the tractor. So here we are on the right-hand side of the tractor. Uh, first thing I actually want to point out is one thing I didn't hit on the left-hand side, which is that this model does have a factory installed radio. This is an option. This model does have it. Uh, you know, for those long days in this tractor, maybe with mowing or whatever you're doing, you will be able to have your, your favorite tunes there. While we're up here, as you can see, there are these air conditioner vents. So we work our way around, you'll see that you have six vents all the way around um, and your controls for heating and cooling. Uh, the great thing about this is, as we know, that heat rises. Um, so it's pushing this cold air down on you and keeping it down on you all the time. And there's also nothing obstructing it from getting it to you. A lot of models, a lot of competitors put them down here in the uh, console, which is okay, but that blows the air out and kind of away from you and also has things that may be in your way of getting that, that cool air to you. So just one thing we like to point out. Uh, as we look here on the right hand side, some things I'll point out. This is your control station here. Uh, we'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, you also have your, uh, your, I'm sorry, your speed selector here for your RPMs. And then you also have your tilt steering wheel. Another one of those comfortability features of the R-Series tractor uh, to be to make you as comfortable as possible in this thing. Um, so we'll go back here to the control panel. As you can see, you do have turn signals. Uh, they correspond right up here in these corners, um, but you do have turn signals here. This is going to be your selector. Uh, here would be where your hour meter would be, which I'll just turn the switch here. As you can see, everything lights up there, and we do have our engine hours. As we push the button here, you can go there to your ground speed. Uh, right there would be your vehicle hours. 
PTO hours, so on and so forth. You can scroll through those different options there. Uh, below it, you would have your um, hazards there um, used for you know if you know you need those flashers on you have that option these are going to be for your region this being a uh, tier 4 tractor you do have the diesel particulate filter what that does it's an exhaust filter um, it's just it's a it, we're trying to preserve the environment the best we can so we do have that exhaust filter to you know just to filter out that bad stuff so from time to time that needs to be cleaned this tractor is normally set up on a automatic system but this here with the p next to it sometimes it'll pop up and flash and tell you need to be parked to do that cleaning this would be to turn that cleaning off which we do not uh, suggest you do uh, at any time uh, below that would be your light selector um, so you do have uh, lights there in the front of the hood and you also have lights up top so you have that selection here and turn this off and as you can see down here I touched on these pedals a little bit but these are your twin touch pedals for your transmission as I talked about before you'd select your range over here in A B and C and then you would just go forward and reverse here with these pedals very simple very easy for any type of operator uh, as we're working our way up I'll talk about the joystick here this is your loader joystick I just want to point out how I mean how ergonomically designed that is it's a very comfortable design very comfortable if you were needing to do loader work all day side to side for and aft there um, you could leave your hand on that all day long and just be comfortable rather than maybe that little knob generally that a lot of tractors have uh, one thing we get asked about a lot is this flat spot here this can be popped out and I'll actually can be for a third function on your loader what that means is right now you have two hydraulic functions you have an up and down and you have a side to side for tilting and dumping your bucket you could have this third function for um, like a grapple out on the front it gives you another hydraulic outlet to run another cylinder uh, for you know just the more versatility for that loader uh, moving down we'll talk about uh, all of our functions here this is going to be for your uh, three-point arms this is going to be your raising and lowering and also picking your position uh, you have three open slots here you can have three rear hydraulic outlets on this tractor uh, this one is equipped uh, with no rear hydraulics but you can have three you do have those options moving back here you have your pto uh, this is going to be to turn on your pto or turn it off um, so you have that not very easy just a pop button uh, a lot of models have a manual pto which would be a lever sometimes hard to engage sometimes that cable breaks this is all electronic on and off if you needed to if your PTO wasn't working, that's simply just pop that button out, unplug wiring harness, plug another one back in and pop it in. Real simple and easy there. Uh, as we go over here, this is another control panel. Has some really great features that are specific to this R model. Uh, first thing that a lot of tractors have, except this one's electronically uh, integrated, you do have that cruise control. So you can turn it on and then uh, down speed, up speed, just like you would in your vehicle, which is a great feature for when you're mowing uh, or different things like that. Uh, we'll start here on the left. This button here is going to be your load match. This is an anti-stall feature. Basically, whenever you have that, say that load on the front and you're going up a hill, uh, some tractors will stall out. If you have this engaged, it will not allow the tractor to stall out. It will The engine will match load with the load that you're trying to move. So great feature for that loader work. This one's gonna be what's called speed match. Here you can pick the max speed um, that you want your tractor to go at for when you're using your, your, four, your four and reverse pedals, you could pick the match speed that this will get to and not go above. Um, just a safety feature for whenever you're gonna be doing, say, um, you know, whatever various um, things you're gonna be doing. Say if you have an um, inexperienced operator in here and you don't want them going over a certain speed, you can match that here. Uh, over here on the right, very neat feature. Uh, this is going to be your e-throttle. Um, what you can do here is, if this is engaged, your RPMs will match with how hard you're depressing your accelerator. So when you're pushing on your forward pedal, your RPMs will match it, kind of like, like your vehicle would. Uh, next feature, this is going to be your motion match. Uh, as you can see, you have a tractor with a, a long arrow there and a tractor with a short arrow there. What this is, is this is a coasting feature. So when you're doing that loader work, if you were to go over here to the long arrow, this would allow a lot longer coast. Once you let off that pedal, a longer coast to that destination uh, before the tractor is going to come to a stop. And then over here, if you go all the way to the right, this would be like an instant stop. Once you let off that pedal, the tractor is going to come to that stop. Being a hydrostatic transmission, 
um, it's going to help the transmission itself will slow you down as you let off those pedals so this in the middle would just be your your normal position and then of course you'd have your sudden stop or your long coast so very neat feature of the R tractor here um, so and then this here would also be your uh, indicator light for that uh, hydraulic oil temperature so need to be keeping in mind that you need to be checking that um, guys that pretty well goes over everything here in the cab so we'll move our way out and talk about a couple more things so uh, stick with us okay guys so in closing here I just want to go over a few service points first one I want to go over is gonna be underneath the hood here uh, so on this model to get into the hood it's a little different than others you don't have the latch here on the front or a latch down below what you have here is you have this little service port right here uh, that indicates this is where you raise the hood now you can't get your finger in there uh, but this is a safety feature to keep the kids and other people out of the hood maybe that you don't want in it so that what you'll do to get in it is you'll pull out your keys out of your pocket or a screwdriver or whatever you got and you'll stick it there in the hole you'll hear it pop and then easy enough raises up uh, very easy to raise up that is John Deere's poly hood very strong durable poly has the uh, the raising the arm here to keep it raised up uh, some of these service points will point out uh, very easy to get to your air filter here uh, you'd have your radiator cap to be able to check your your coolant levels uh, you have your radiator screens here that you'll need to clean out uh, from time to time but it should keep it very, pretty clean with all the mesh guards that you have around here also I'll point out easy to change these headlights if you do happen to have one go out you got plenty of space here uh, you've also got space that if you were to have something come in and and protrude into the front here you've got some space before it would get back here to your radiator um, and your your other uh, cooling elements here uh, we'll move down here and I'll show you just a couple more things you've got your filters are all really easy to get to you have got your fuel filter here with your on and off shut off real easy to see Got your oil filter there and also your dipstick right behind it right here very easy to get to and also your other fuel filter up here at the top um, we talked about also how easy it was to get to the battery so just keep in mind your battery right there in that box unscrew those silver knobs there super easy to get to along with your greasing ports here that we had talked about when we were talking about the loader um, guys i know this was a quick fast overview of this tractor but i just want you to keep in mind that if you're in the market for that 40 50 horse tractor you've got to come see uh, one of these john deere 4000 series tractors like like i pointed out in the cab how ergonomic it is how easy it's set up easy to get to the transmission in these things with that hydrostatic those uh, forward and reverse pedals super easy as a, as com, as opposed to some of the competition guys you've got to get in these and drive them and see for yourself see how they fit see how easy they are to use and don't just come drive, test drive ours test drive those other brands and compare uh, from one to the other so I hope that we pointed out some of these things, made you a little bit more comfortable, uh, make it easier to make that trip to us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. We'd love to hear your feedback, so please comment below and uh, stick with us for more videos. We'll see you next time.